The Data Cloud Diaries, ingesting data from Amazon S3. Welcome to the Data Cloud Diaries. We're doing a new series on the Steve TechArc channel, and I'm gonna be diving into interesting thoughts on Data Cloud. So today what we're starting with is I have a whole set of open source data that's about airports. It's detailed information, it's open source about airports all around the world. We're gonna bring that data in to data cloud using Amazon S3. So it'll be an interesting experiment to bring in, there's approximately 70 plus thousand airports with their runway information, um, nav aids and other related data. So we're gonna bring that in and see what it looks like inside of data cloud. So we're gonna start with its open source data called our airports. And what we're gonna do is it's a search, but if you go to downloads, it gives you a bunch of data sets um, on airports. So we have airports. There are, look at the number of uh, airports, airport frequencies. Let me make this a little bit bigger. We have airports, frequencies, comments on the airports, runways, navigational aids, countries and regions. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this, we're gonna attempt to bring this in to data cloud. So here is the data model that I have you know, mapped out. We have airports, which have comments. They have frequencies. They have runways. We also see that airports are part of regions, which are in countries. And the navigational aids, some of them are linked um, to airports and others you know, are not. And then these are in specific countries. So let's take a look at this. Here are the files that I've downloaded. So if we're going to open airports, let's take, we're gonna peek at the contents. So we can see that we have an ID, an ident for the airport type, and this includes all kinds of airports, including little helipads and small airports all over the world. When it gives us information, in this case, let's see about the latitude, longitude, elevation, continent, region and linkages. So this is airports. Let's take a peek at another fun one, which would be the runways. So these are the runways for the airports. Some are on turf, some are gravel, some are grass. I just like this because it's a lot of sample data that's all linked together. And I think it's interesting. And we can even take the nav aids. The navigational aids, which are giving us where to find the particular Latin long and frequency of these navigational aids. And some of them are linked to associated airports. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this data in to Salesforce Data Cloud. Now here is my Amazon S3 and I have a bucket called Steve Tech Arc Demo. And I've created a folder called Our Airports. And right now, that folder doesn't have any data. So what we're gonna do is we are going to upload this data and we're gonna grab our finder and we're gonna take these files and take all of these files and drag and drop them in. So we have 21 megs all set to load into my Amazon S3 bucket under a certain folder and we're gonna upload. And so right now, the files are streaming up to S3, so we can tap into them. All right, so the data is now loaded into our S3 bucket, and it's the CSVs, and we could be setting up some regular draw job that drops them into the S3 bucket so Data Cloud can pick them up. Now, here we are in a sandbox, Salesforce org that has data cloud. And what I've done is I've created a data space for Steve TechArc. So that way I can separate all of my data related to this demo in its own data space. This is a way as if you had different divisions of a company or other ways that you wanna keep a strong separation in your data cloud, you would create a data space and it actually creates a permission set. And so the way I created that was I went over to here Data Cloud Setup, and under Data Spaces, 
I created it and I actually got a permission set that um, I use right here and I added myself as a member. So from here, we're gonna go to permission sets. And it created a permission set called Steve TechArc, the name of the data space, and I added myself to it. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a data stream and I created a filter for OA data data streams and we're gonna create a new data stream to pull this data. So I'm gonna hit new from Amazon S3, hit next, and we're gonna, I'm gonna feed in the data for this. So what I have here is I put in the bucket name, I put in my access key and my secret key, I've designated a CSV, given it the directory, the file name, given it a source of S3, and I'm gonna hit next. We'll uh, change this. We'll call it Amazon S3, um, or we'll give it a source details, OA, for S3. Okay. Now what it's doing, we're gonna decide that we're gonna create a new data lake object. And that was from a previous test, but we'll create a new data lake object. And we're gonna go OA, airport. And that is going to be, and then we will be making this match the stream. So we'll just call it OA airport. This type of data is not profile, not about a person. It's not engage or an individual. It's not engagement data. It's not about activity. It's other data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick, and the ID is the ID. We can see it's already loaded the file, found the columns. And what we're gonna do is, so it's OA airport singular. And we're gonna bring in the data without any formula modifications. Hit next. And we're gonna take a quick peek we're gonna, this is not, file's not changing. If it was, I would put this on a schedule. We're gonna go refresh the initial file immediately. And we're gonna go deploy. Oh, we gotta select a refresh mode, upsert. So if we do a, do a refresh, it's gonna be upserting and, and doing the data versus a full refresh. And let's do deploy. Select the data space. We're gonna drive this into the Steve Tech Arc for data separation. So OA airport for and hit deploy. And this is now deploying OA airport and bringing the data in. I'll pause. So what I'm doing is I'm watching the data stream. It's active and we're waiting for it to process. The last run status is pending. So with just a minute or two of waiting, we have OA Airport, Amazon S3, ingest 76,947 records. We have the last refresh date. So we have imported 76,000 airport records. We can see in the data lake objects, what we can do is filter, and there's our OA Airport created on. And so this represents the data lake, the DLO, that has been created directly from the data. There's uh, been no additional fields added. And then what we can do is we can actually go to the data explorer. So we're gonna go to the data space. We're gonna select the data lake object and OA airport is the one we brought in. And by using the data explorer, I think we can see up to a hundred records. We can change filtering and we can examine the data. So from here, I can start looking at the particular data. If I go back to its source and wanna see a missing column, I can edit the columns. I can remove some of this data. And then I can bring in any other data like uh, the name and latitude. Here's latitude in degrees. And so now I can see that I have brought in 76,000 records from an Amazon S3 file and brought in. Let's do another one. So what I do is go to my data streams. I'm gonna hit new. 
Amazon. I'm gonna put, and then I'll populate my, da my data values. So what we have here is I put in my bucket, STA demo. That's the name of my S3 bucket. I have my S3 access key, secret key. Those are kept secret. Is the CSV file. The directory is the our airports. And we saw that through my Amazon S3 bucket. There's my file name, my source. We're gonna hit next. And now it's retrieving the data stream and querying it. We're gonna then tell it to create a new data lake object. And we're gonna give it, since we chose runways, this will become runway. OA, runway. And since this is also not related to either a person, individual or unified profile, nor is it related to activity, I'm gonna make it an other. And we're gonna look at the data. And it looks like it also has the primary key ID. We're gonna leave it alone as is. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit next. We're gonna verify. We're gonna say frequency of none, refresh immediately. And we're gonna check a data space to put it in with the Steve TechArc. And we're gonna trigger an upsert. That way the upsert, if we got a partial file, it wouldn't delete it. If we knew we were always getting full files, we might do a full refresh, but this is gonna be a partial file. And now we're gonna deploy. And now we're deploying the second data stream. OA runway, we're gonna go OA data. So now we see the second data stream and it is put it in the queue for processing. You can see that the Stream type is in jest, the, stat the run status is pending, and we'll see when it is does process, we'll see the last refreshed, and we'll see the number of records. And now I've been refreshing, it's taken about four minutes, four or five minutes, and now you can see that the runway has processed. We've got 45,000 records and the refresh. So we know about the runways, the different runways at the airports. What we can do is go to our data lake objects, DLOs, we can see the runway and we can use the data explorer, picking our data space, picking the data lake, DLO, and looking at the runway. And now we can actually see the airport reference and we can see the different data. So this way we can, now in this particular case, we're noticing that this is coming in as an integer and we'll probably wanna be creating things like formula fields to represent the keys. But this, we'll be focusing on that in subsequent sessions, how we might alter the data, add in formula fields and create the models. But as we, this allow, uh, at least allows us to see two functional data streams, which have turned into two data DLOs. And we can use the Data Explorer to view the data. Coming in here, OA Airport, and viewing the data. So this was a nice little insight I wanted to share with you of how you bring in big files, put them in your S3 buckets, and then link your data cloud to the, to the data stream to the S3 buckets and bring the data into your DLOs, data lake objects. So stay tuned for more. We're gonna be diving deeper and deeper on this series on the data cloud diaries. And join us for more chapters soon of the diaries, same bad time. Same bad channel, subscribe to www.stevetechark or Steve Tech Arc at the YouTube and have a great day. Thank you.